Hello, my name is Paul Templeton. I am the Regional Jet Training Center Manager for ATP and hopefully you've just signed up for our RJ course. I want to help you get ready for it. Nothing reflects effort uh, more than this course. The better prepared you are, the better you'll do when you get here. Hopefully you've uh, gained access to and had a chance to get started on your um, computer-based training course. But what I want to talk to you about today is the manual that you've just gotten. If you look at chapter two with me, what you'll see is our rendition of a pilot's operating handbook. When you get to the airlines, they will give you one specific to their airline, and in their book, as in ours, you'll see a description of how to do every maneuver uh, that you'll be doing while you're here. For instance, if you're training and you see that uh, you'll be starting an APU, you want to know what an APU is, much less how to, how to start it, this is where you would come. You would look for it in the index, find it in the text, and it would describe to you exactly how to safely start an auxiliary power unit, which is what an APU is. Specifically though, what I need you to have when you get here is your flows and your profiles. Let's talk about flows first. In the airline business, we do checklists just like you do in general aviation. However, we have to do them a lot quicker. We have a lot of checklists to accomplish on the ground, and it's a very dangerous place um, on the ramp at an airport. So what we're trying to do is get our checklist done, get the aircraft prepared to fly, and get off the ground and get our, our passengers to their destination. Let's look at the back of chapter two, just before chapter three, and what you'll see is a lot of folded pictures of the RJ cockpit. And they're titled up here too. This is a first officer flow for the takeoff checklist. It uh, unfolds here, and what you can see in this line is depicts the uh, flow as you go from one button or station to another, all the way down. At the bottom here, it has a textual description of what the flow is. You can take these pictures along with this folded poster here of the RJ cockpit. Take this poster and put it somewhere in your house where you won't get in trouble for doing it. Then take the pictures that I just showed you also in the inside cover of the book are three valuable documents that will help you a lot too. First of all, this is the expanded flows and this tells in detail uh, every single thing that you do in there. This is also a checklist. You'll notice that some parts of the checklist are grayed out. That's because we do not use those parts of the checklist, so you can disregard them. But any parts of the checklist that you can read uh, that are dark uh, are valuable and you'll be using these a lot while you're here. Also, uh, you have another sheet. It's a cheat sheet for the, the flows. It has every single one of the flows that we ask you to memorize uh, depicted right here. You can use this the first couple of days when you're here, but then after that we like to see you do your flows from memory. Again, what will happen, you can take the checklist here and you say uh, the captain calls for the after start checklist. What happens is the FO will then do his or her flows, the captain will do his or her flows, and once you're both done with the flows, then you'll take out the checklist and actually verify that everything's been done. Again, it's a very fast, effective way to accomplish checklists, which are probably one of the most important things that we do as piloting, piloting an aircraft. Second thing I'd like to talk to you about are profiles. Um, airlines and likewise our flight school are very specific the way we want you to do things. In this case, what we're going to talk about again at the end, end of chapter two are these illustrations right here. And what this depicts, in this case, this is an aborted takeoff, but you can tell that virtually everything we do, there's a go around on one engine or two. These are prof uh, profiles of the approaches, both precision and non-precision approaches, and I'll come back to those in just a minute. And uh, then right here we have the first one, which is the normal takeoff flaps eight degrees. I want to use this as an example of how to use these profiles. This one starts out on the left side of the profile here, and the very first part right here it says the pilot flying selects TOGA, which is takeoff or go around button that sits on the side of the throttle lever, or thrust lever, excuse me, set 70% in one and then call set power. Anything that's in quotation marks is, is uh, known as a call out, and I need you to memorize all those for every profile in here. 
Uh, PF, that means the pilot flying, that will be you while you're flying. And then the PNF is the pilot not flying, which will also be you when you're not flying, or you'll be sitting in the left seat. So in this one, let's follow it here. The pilot flying selects toga, set 70% N1, and then calls set power. The pilot not flying then has up to 60 knots to reply, reply power is set. Then uh, the pilot not flying says 80 knots. Pilot flying says check. Then B1, VR, positive rate, gear up, speed mode, heading mode, and on and on and on through the takeoff roll and takeoff. One of the things that I've always done in my career that's helped out a lot is take two different colored highlighters, highlight everything that the pilot flying says in one color, everything that the non-flying pilot says in another color, and then get a friend to help you study. Uh, take this uh, profile after you're done with it, put it on your coffee table, and fly your couch around the pattern a few times. Anybody who can read would be a good training partner in this scenario. And uh, practice from one seat 10 times, then switch seats and try it 10 more times. If you do that every day in preparation for this, uh, you'll be very, very hot when you get here. Now the second one is called an engine failure at V1, which is also known as a V1 cut. It's basically an emergency single engine takeoff. This aircraft will perform that uh, amazingly. What I want to point out here, though, is the difference between the, the easiest maneuver we do, which is a normal takeoff, and the toughest maneuver we do, which is a V1 cut, really only varies from each other in small ways. Notice that here, as we begin the takeoff roll, all the call-outs are exactly the same. The difference is here, we say, uh, the pilot not flying will say power loss, which tells you you've just lost an engine. We've still got to continue into the air and treat it as an in-flight emergency. So here we, say, we have uh, positive rate, gear up, speed mode, bug V2, heading mode, half bank. And you will teach you what those are all about, or you can look them up yourself in chapter two, as I described to you before. The important thing I'm trying to point out right now is that there's only very subtle differences between an emergency procedure and a normal procedure. So after you've learned one or the normal procedure, you've learned pretty much the rest of it too. Very little difference. This is an approach profile. This is a little bit different. Obviously, we're not taking off. We're now coming into the approach environment to shoot an approach and land. This is the easiest one we do. This is a, a two-engine ILS approach. Uh, we'll do this coupled to the autopilot. So really, you're just thinking ahead of the airplane more than worried about your, your skills manipulating the aircraft. The approach profiles start up at the top here. This one says, recommended clean speed is 200 knots. We do most of our maneuvering here at 250 knots, so the first thing you need to do once you hear that you're on an approach is slow down to 200. We follow it down here, we're going to slow down to 180 and we're going to go flaps 8 degrees. As we come around vectored onto the final approach course, we're going to slow down further to 160 and go to 20 degrees of flaps as we're, as we're joining the final. A dot and a half below the glide slope, the call out is gear down, flaps 30, landing checklist to the line, and then we start down the slide here with the associated call outs as we go down to either land or go around. In any case, um, do the same thing that you did before, which is highlight everything the pilot flying says in one color and the non-flying pilot says in another color, and then um, maybe even break out an approach plate and try to develop some situational awareness as you meld the profile with the approach plate. Um, practice this a lot and it'll really pay off for you. The other thing that I wanted to show you while we're talking about these approach profiles, this is a single engine ILS approach, meaning you've had an engine failure, so now we're shooting this whole approach on one engine. The only difference between the emergency approach and the normal approach are two things, only two. One, First off, we don't slow to 160 knots as we join final. We'll go ahead and go 20 knots or 20 degrees of flaps at 180 knots. Uh, the main reason is if you slow to 160, the gear horn will go off. So we maintain 180. The only other difference is we never lower the flaps below 20 degrees on a single engine. That is, those are virtually the only differences between a normal approach and an emergency approach. One thing I also wanted to point out, this is a non-precision approach, such as a VOR, a localizer-only approach. Again, very, very similar to one we just did. 
The main difference is here, um, we, now we don't have a glide slope to tip us off when it configured for landing. So five miles outside of the final approach fix is where we'll say gear down, flaps 30, landing checklist to the line. Uh, again, the only difference between a single engine um, VOR approach or non-precision approach and a one engine VOR approach or non-precision approach is exactly what I pointed out before. We don't slow down, we never go below 20 degrees of flaps. With all these profiles, if you'll just uh, do as I suggested, highlight them so you can practice call outs. Think about where you'll be in an approach when you're, when you're practicing the approach profiles. Uh, be diligent in your practice uh, every day and you'll be ready when you get here. Uh, hope all your studying goes well. Please don't be afraid to call us if, if you have any questions. We'd rather you uh, take a few minutes and get straightened down and practice the right thing uh, than have to uh, backtrack once you get here. Thanks a lot for your time and attention and I look forward to meeting you when you get here.